welcome again friends in this video tutorial we'll be talking about active transport we've been talking about uh, membrane transport uh, since uh, two or three videos now in this video about the active transport in little bit more details you know active transport means it's a type of membrane transport where the molecule is moving against its concentration gradient now as the molecule is moving against the concentration gradient that means it's moving from a low concentration to the higher concentration it requires energy source energy as atp right it requires atp hydrolysis energy to move that molecule against its concentration gradient so if i if i draw a cell uh, the bilayer lipid bilayer okay and this is a cross section view of the cell then active transport means uh, the molecule let's say here is uh, this is the inside this is the outside and let's say the example for active transport i can give you is sodium potassium transport normally let's say sodium concentration is less inside while sodium concentration is very high sodium concentration is very high outside so what we need to do in this case we want to transfer sodium outside the cell from inside okay so we are going against the concentration gradient so for achieving this task we need a specific type of protein membrane proteins to deal with the situation because sodium cannot transfer itself through the cell membrane because cell membrane has the hydrophobic core region inside so here sodium will move from the low concentration to the high concentration but here they require a specific protein I told you this is the membrane protein okay now in this case of sodium transport we have a uh, different sodium potassium ATPase pump okay now the sodium potassium ATPase pump will help sodium to go from the low concentration of the sodium to the high concentration of the sodium and not only it transfers sodium but it also transfers potassium but the idea here it pushes sodium from low to high and that's against the concentration gradient so it's a form of active transport okay now the active transport can be of two different types remember it can be of two different types one is the primary active transport or another one is the secondary active transport in primary active transport we require direct energy source that is the presence of ATP okay while in secondary active transport we are here using uh, energy coupled process energy coupled process to drive the molecule okay so these are the two types not direct energy but we have a couple of energy energy coupling okay so let's look at here the primary type we talked about it moving from low to high requires atp hydrolysis directly transfers the molecule outside now we are talking about specific membrane proteins these membrane proteins have a structure to bind with the molecule that it needs to transfer as well as it should have a specific region to bind with ATP that means it should have an ATP binding site right so ATP binding site binds with ATP ATP hydrolysis occurs and what it does the molecule structure the, the protein structure changes it alters the conformation of structure is changed due to that change in conformation that uh, pump is now open and that can drag molecules to the desired location so it's a direct type now in the indirect type or secondary type called as energy coupled now in the energy coupled for example sometimes we need to drive some molecules or glucose inside the cell you know glucose is very very important and no matter whether the glucose is present less or high in the extracellular space cell always want glucose to take inside because either uh, if, if, if they have a lot of energy molecules produced, they will store the glucose or they will burn the glucose to produce energy. So it, either way, they require glucose inside. So let's say here, the glucose molecule that we're talking about, the concentration of glucose is low, uh, is high, sorry. Let's say it's high inside the cell. And the glucose concentration is very low outside the cell in this scenario. So how could the cell will take glucose from low to high okay so glucose should be moved from outside to the inside against the concentration gradient and obviously they require a channel protein to do, do that and we have a protein for that 
but in this case we are not using direct energy what instead we are using we are using the concentration of sodium let's say the concentration of sodium build up outside is very high as you can see it's very high when well, the concentration of sodium is very low inside so what we do we have a specific protein membrane protein inside specific type of membrane protein which will bind to the sodium outside as well as it will bind to the glucose okay and now as sodium is moving from high to low concentration it provides some energy as it's moving from high to low it provides some energy now this specific pump use that energy to drive glucose against its concentration gradient okay so sodium is against going going down the gradient provides the energy that's taken and that's used to take glucose against its concentration gradient outside to inside of the cell okay and that's how this is known as energy coupled transfer okay or secondary active transport okay where we use the energy and couple that energy from a molecule transport down the gradient and use it uh, to transport a molecule against the concentration gradient and that's a very interesting thing this is one example there are multiple examples sodium and proton there are proton pumps like h plus sodium and protons can be transported like that so again based on the idea of active transport we can also have multiple different modes of active transport we call them uniport symport or antiport okay we call them uniport symport antiport okay now if you go to uniport uniport means two molecules are moving to the same direction using the carrier okay two molecules moving same direction using the carrier symport two molecules are moving sorry uh, in uniport normally they are moving in same direction and among that symport means these are all called of a co transport co transport okay where two molecules are transporting together okay these are the scenarios symport two molecules are moving at the same direction okay in antiport two molecules are moving in the opposite direction the examples in symport we see this this is a co transport right this is also known as co transport the type of symport we see it's glucose and sodium symport when antiport is sodium potassium moving in opposite directions symport moving in the same direction glucose and sodium moving in the same direction while glucose and potassium moving in the opposite direction symport and antiport okay these are the examples of the co transport okay and uniport means the molecule is moving in one direction it's not a type of co transport there okay so in both the cases we may require in i mean actually not may we actually require energy for that but in some symports it is energy coupled for example this secondary transport system that we see in case of sodium and glucose uptake okay that is energy coupled while in antiport the ovules require energy to do that okay because things are moving in the opposite directions like sodium potassium atps pump that we see okay so these are the examples of an active transport okay and it's very very important though it requires energy so it needs to have a tight control also they cannot allow any molecules to come and go right they also have specific ion channels present in the cell membrane which can either open uh, due to the voltage fluctuations of the membrane resting potential or which can also be activated due to the binding of a specific ligand molecule to the to the protein to the channel protein or carrier protein or it may be activated due to a stress response signal that's coming from inside the cell and that can also cause it to open because you know while in the during the stress cell has multiple uh, different expressions of that stress and one of such expression is to open up some channels known as stress response channels and through those channels they can uptake certain molecules from outside and they require to do that uh, without any other control so that's why those things are regulated so those are all ion channels that are all in the part of active transport 
ultimately providing uh, the complete uh, process, the physiological process of the cell. So that's all about active transport. I hope you guys like the video. If you like the video, please hit the like button, uh, share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel. The link is provided here on the top as well as in the, in the bottom. Okay, so you can subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that. Thank you.